My friends, you better strap in because this is going to be a long one. I've got so many things to tell you about today. I don't even know where to start. So I've got at least six items on the list and who knows how many more I'll come up with by the time we finish. And I'll tell you all about that right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Bye bye February. It's the 27th. It's Monday and we got one more day of February left and then we're into that windy March and it's already starting to show how windy it is here this morning. It is warm though. I didn't burn much wood last night. Thank goodness. Maybe I'm on my last wagon load of wood. You just never know. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Oh, there's been years where I've had to burn it all the way into May. Oh, and my gosh, that's a horrible winter when you do that. Well, I really don't know where to start today. I have got so many things to tell you about it, and I think you're going to be interested in most of them. We had a uh, visitor over the weekend, and he brought me a Gibson guitar. So I have a little short film clip of that, and let me show you that right now. My friends, we have Ken Dietrich here from Pennsylvania in the shop. And he brought me a present right here. He gave this to me <laughs> to work on, that is. It's a, about a 1968 or 69, is that right? That's right. Yes. And what model do you call this? It's an SJN, Southern Jumbo Natural. And uh, it's it's very similar to the country and western. Uh, okay, cool. Gibson guitar. Well, it's uh, it's a real nice guitar. It's up in very good shape. It's a one owner guitar, and he's owned it since brand new, right? Since new, yes. And uh, it's got a little problem. Uh, the bridge is pulling off. Uh, we were just discussing this, and I I was trying really hard not to talk him into anything. I just said, look, if you want to keep it original, we'll keep it original. If, you know, if you're asking me what I do, I would change this for two reasons. Number one, it will give you a better sound if you change this. And number two, it also makes it sturdier because you get rid of these bolts. And these bolts, whenever the bridge pulls loose like it has here, then the bolts are the only thing holding it. And it puts all that stress in that line right there on that grain line. And it will crack the top every time. And so we've already loosened the strings on it. But it's a really nice guitar up in very, very good shape. It's going to be even better when we get done with it. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thank, thank you. you for bringing it. Yes. Well, Ken seems like a really nice fella, and he travels from uh, Pennsylvania to Winfield, Kansas, and made a little kind of a detour through my shop here on the way, I think. Or maybe on the way back. I'm not sure which way he was headed, to be honest with you. But he is well aware that that guitar is going to sit on the shelf for quite a while before I get to it. Because I am going to be taking a break here before too long. Now don't get all excited because that break's not ready to happen yet. I've got, it looks like I have five instruments yet to finish before I can take that break. I, I'm trying really hard. And I'm going to have to get seriously busy. With all the extra work I have to do now that I'm running everything by myself, it's pretty hard to get to all of it and get to it in a timely fashion. My son's channel is doing really well. My son, JR, who lives next door, he has got a uh, channel called Homestead Horsemanship. A couple of his videos are starting to blow up and have really gotten a lot of views. And he has been uh, on a mission to rescue a Clydesdale horse. It was malnutritioned and was, it was at an auction barn. It is now at another auction barn down in Texas. And so uh, he is doing a fundraiser right now to collect the funds to go uh, rescue that Clydesdale and he's going to nurse it back to health. If you're interested in taking a look at that and maybe even helping him, I have a link to his video in the description of my video today. So check that out if you're interested. And while you're over there on his channel, give him a subscribe. Help him out. He's doing really well. His channel's starting to really grow and um, I'm wishing him the best. I hope everything works out really well for him. The next thing I wanted to tell you about is that I've updated my list of products that I use again. I keep enhancing it. I have to say, even 
if I'm sounds like I'm bragging, that's quite a valuable list of products. And over the weekend, I went through it and proofed it because I knew there were some typos and things. And I went through and proofed it. And as I proofed it, I read everything again. And what I'd like to do is encourage you to go to my products I use page and go down through all the products and read the descriptions. You'll be surprised. There's a lot of helpful information in there. I didn't even realize, you know, how good it is until I read it this weekend. And I think, especially if you're a new luthier getting into this, it might help you to go down through there and read all the descriptions on all those products. Even if you don't buy anything, I think you might find some information there that will be helpful. And of course, if you do decide to buy those products, it helps me a little bit if you do purchase them from those links because I do get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you any extra. And I did try to always find the cheapest deal on Amazon I could find. Now keep in mind, that was the cheapest deal when I put it on there. there all those things change all the time. So you might, it might end up costing you an extra dollar or two over the best deal you could get, but keep in mind you're helping me out and I would appreciate that. In addition to telling you about that list of products, I did want to tell you one of the products I put on there this weekend is a product that if you are a gardener or if you spend any time with your hands in the dirt, you're going to love this. And that is a pair of gloves that I just happened on. You know, doing all this metal detecting in the back, which I'm going to get to next, I needed a pair of good rubber type gloves, you know, because you're digging in that damp ground all the time. And plus there's glass and, you know, ro these sharp rocks here and everything. So it's just good for your hands. Well, all the rubber gloves I had tried prior to this just wear out in no time. I mean, like in no time. Well, this particular pair of gloves that I found are incredibly comfortable, even for my giant hands. They're stretch fit and the rubber on them just seems to last and last. I bought two pair because I figured the first pair would wear out. I've been wearing that first pair for a month now, digging, you know, not every day, of course, but, you know, digging at least every weekend and two or three times per weekend, maybe two or three hours at a time and digging in that dirt, pulling all that dirt out by hand, haven't wore it all. So the first pair I'm still on and they're working great. By now I would have wore out at least two other pair of gloves. So these are great gloves. If you spend any time gardening or doing anything like that outdoors, you're gonna want these gloves, I tell you. There's one more side benefit to these gloves and that is that they uh, you can use your smartphone with them. You don't even have to take them off to use your smartphone. Even after I've coated them in dirt and everything, it works perfect right on my smartphone. So it's pretty cool. It's really pretty cool pair of gloves. I would get you a pair of them. If you do that type of work, you'll love them. Of course, that segues into the fact that I've been doing some more metal detecting this weekend. And I did do quite a bit. And unfortunately, I didn't find a whole lot. But I did find a couple of things that I think you'll find interesting. One of them I actually found a couple of weeks ago, but I just didn't clean it up. And I didn't know what I had found. Well, here it is. Another Civil War bullet. This is an infield. And you can look at the rings on it, and the top ring is pretty shallow, and then it gets deeper. And look at this line in the back back here. I was looking up Civil War bullets, and I swear to you, this is the, it looks like the exact bullet in their picture. It, it, with that line and everything. I mean, it is identical to the picture. This one, it, it looked kind of like a drop, but I don't think it was a drop. I do think it was shot. It just didn't hit anything hard, is what I think. It hit into a clay bank and uh, didn't mushroom out much. That's what I think. I, it could have been a drop. I mean, anything's possible. While I'm showing you that Civil War bullet, uh, you know, people had told me this was a 50-some caliber bullet. Well, this one is 52. I've already checked it out, plus the one in the drawing was 52 caliber. And people were telling me this was a 50-some caliber bullet. It's not. It's a 69. Look how much bigger it is. It's just tremendously bigger than this bullet. It's hard to see the difference, but this is a big bullet here. This was a, a three ringer mini ball is what this one is. And it's, it's huge, 69 caliber. So I found those two bullets. I found these two uh, rimfire shells that were made in 1864. And these are Fitch Van Vecht. And these were made for the Civil War also. And then finally, I found my eagle button back there. Now, the eagle button's a little hard to see because it's pretty crunched. I don't know if you can see the eagle in it or not, but it's definitely there. So those are the five Civil War things I found. I've always said I wish I could tie this farm into the Civil War. 
Well, I'm pretty sure I'm tying it in now because, you know, when you find five different things and they're all pretty much black and white what they are, you know, it is what it is. Now, again, I didn't find any of that this weekend. I'm going to be clear. But this weekend, I went, you know, was back there looking quite a bit, maybe as much as I've ever looked on a weekend. And I really didn't find very much. I kind of exhausted most of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's signals everywhere, but most of those signals you can tell is some kind of iron, some kind of nail, some kind of, you know, and yeah, they could be something good. I'll be honest, it could be. But I'm trying to dig just the high tone signals and most of the high tone signals I've dug. Well, I hit on a really high tone signal back there. It was in the 30s. And I'm thinking, wow, I have never even hit a, t a signal that high back there yet. On the Equinox 800, uh, you know, a high third or a mid 30s is a really good signal. And you think, man, this is going to be something great. Now, keep in mind, I had already just an hour before that, I had discovered this infield bullet in all the stuff I had found. And I went, wow. I, so I'm thinking Civil War, you know, I've got Civil War on my mind because of this bullet. So when I get this number 30 signal, I'm thinking it's going to be a big silver coin or something, or hopefully it's something related to the Civil War. You just never know. So uh, I start digging and I'm not finding it. You know, I don't see anything silver shining there. I, my pinpointer moves and I see a circle of dirt about this big move. Just it's a, it, the whole dirt moved like in a, as I'm poking it with the pinpointer. I went, oh my gosh, Civil War belt buckle. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's like the holy grail of Civil War stuff, you know? So wishful thinking, of course. What I actually found was a cow tag. <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Yeah, I wish I'd have had it on film because I was so excited thinking, oh man, I think I've got a Civil War belt buckle. And it's just a giant brass cow tag. <laughs> I've actually found one other of these. I, I need to get it out and see what the number is on it because this one's a number 29. Here's the one I found over the weekend that I thought was a belt buckle. Here's the one I found, you know, a couple months ago by our barn here out in the front of the property. You can see they're similar, but they're not the same. This one's got a different shaped hole. And this, you know, this one's a round hole. This one's a long one. Of course, the numbers are different because they're different cattle. But... Uh, also, the shape is just very slightly different, but neither one of these are magnetic. Nowadays, everything's cheap plastic or something else, so I thought it was kind of interesting to find these. They're heavy, so I assume they're brass, but though I haven't actually tested them to see what they are. So I thought that was funny. thought you might get a kick out of that. I also found this thing, and I do not know what this is. It had a good high signal, too. It is not magnetic. I don't think it's lead, but it might be pewter. Now, uh, you know, or pot metal of some sort that's not magnetic, I don't know. It's narrow on this top and wider on the bottom, and it's got this curved bottom to it. The only thing I could think of was that it, you know, uh, on a sickle bar and like even a horse drawn sickle bar, they have these points that come out in between the blades that cut and these points, you know, guide the hay into the blades. And I'm thinking this could be the point off of one of those. But then again, I, those are generally steel, They're, you know, which would be magnetic. So I don't know, but that's what this is shaped like. It's shaped kind of like that. So I don't know, if anybody would happen to have a better guess on that, I'd be interested. And then I did find one thing that is fairly significant. I kind of like it, it's especially on the old farm here. And that is I found a Booker, the Booker and Gibbs, uh, and it's, it's a plowshare. And you can probably read it there somewhere. I think it says it right here, Booker and Gibbs. Above it, it's got Imperial. Good picture of this plow on the internet. In fact, there's a lot of information on these plows on the internet. Apparently, it was a fairly big company, a fairly going company out of uh, Canton, Ohio. Now, hopefully, I can even get you a picture up on this screen. They patented this plow on October 10th, 1876. Well, that's about it for the fines. Like I said, I do think I'm kind of running out of fines back there. I really do, on the high, high tones anyway. 
Uh, they're much fewer and farther between. I thought I would tell you a little bit about some of the big projects that I have coming up that are you know going to be done during my break. Uh, I've already mentioned I wanted to remove those trees up there by the house. There's some big trees and even if I have a tree company come in and cut them down then I'll have to do all the cleanup on that and that's a big project just in itself just the cleanup. But taking them down is going to be a big job. And I've already had a guy come out. In fact, he came out after the shop talk last Friday and gave me an estimate. And it's a really reasonable estimate for me. I, I was expecting it to be twice as much as he quoted. And he seems to be, uh, you know, a licensed, uh, insured type guy. And he seems like a really nice fella and, you know upstanding kind of guy so that's all you can go on is your gut feel and he seems like a good guy so I'm going to go with him and he's going to take them down for me and then I'll do all the cut up and clean up so that's project number one we're going to get that done probably even before I go on my break there's a big bay window on the front of the house and it's just rotted out and I'm going to have to tear all of that out and rebuild that whole thing so that's a big job. I'm going to replace the back door in my rental retreat. It's, uh, you know, the trim on it is really rotted out. And even though the building's only like 20 some years old, I guess the water coming off the house or whatever. And, you know, just, I don't know. It, anyway, it's just rotted out a lot of the trim on the door. And so I'm going to replace that whole door and try to make it more airtight. I'm going to, I mentioned I wanted to build a water wheel and that's a big project. I'm going to build a water wheel and I, I'm going to have to pour a foundation and I'm going to build a, uh, like a little mill house where the water wheel sits on the side of the mill house. So it's going to be a major production. And, uh, but I think it's going to add considerable value, even if it's just a uh, visual value to the farm, in my opinion. I think it's going to be beautiful. At least that's what I have envisioned in my head. I hope I can make it come to fruition. <laughs> In addition to that, as I'm working on that, I'm going to change the overflow point on that pond. Presently, it overflows as the water comes down the hill. At, like you come in through my gate, the water comes under you there and goes into the pond. And then the water goes, flows out to the left, which goes right into my son's field. And it really just soaks his whole field down and it's just a mess. And he can't even use his field because it's so saturated in water out there. That's just the way it's always been. I didn't create that problem. That's just the way it was done originally before I bought the farm. But I'm going to uh, redirect that overflow on the far end of my pond and put a pipe in and let it run down into the creek, uh, which is where it goes eventually anyway after it meanders through his field. It does wind up in the creek anyway, so it's not like I'm changing anything. But I am going to just make it a more direct shot where it just goes, you know, clean water straight into the creek rather than silting all through that field into the creek. So that's a big, you know, a pretty big project, but I don't think that'll take me more than a day. I can probably do that in a day. I have an old Honda four-wheeler. It's actually a 2001 approximately. It's in very good physical shape, uh, but the motor needs to be rebuilt. And I'm going to rebuild the motor on that, I'm hoping, while this... I take this break. And then finally, I just hope to mill a bunch of sawmill lumber. And some of that sawmill lumber will be used on the little mill house that I, and on the water wheel. So I may have to do that before I actually do the water wheel project. But uh, anyway, I, I do want to mill a bunch of lumber and my wife wants some lumber and my daughter wants some lumber. They, they want charcuterie boards is what they want for the most part. But then I think my wife wants stuff for her horse barns and things too. Plus I need to mill some for the bottom of her horse trailer, which I haven't finished. And that's another project I forgot to put on here. I've got to finish her horse trailer. So I better put that on my list too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do all that in two months. <laughs> I think I can actually, I, you know, I might be naive, but that's what I think. I think I can get that done in a couple of months. And if I get all that done, then, you know, I'll do all the other normal honeydew stuff like fixing this doorknob or this squeaking door or something like that. <laughs> okay, moving on. I got some more to tell you about too. One more little trinket that I wanted to sh show you here in a, a picture is, uh, you know, I told you how twisted that elm wood is. And when you, even when you run it through the splitter, it just doesn't want to come apart. So I just thought I'd show you a close-up picture of a piece of that elm firewood just to show you how twisted it is. Uh, 
<clears throat> I mentioned my wife Sue has started making the deer antler saddles for me and she's you know doing a pretty good job for just starting out uh, but she's having some trouble with uh, setting up the drill press to drill the holes and different things there's a lot to it actually way more than you would ever think so I plan to help her today to get some more antler saddles uh, going probably right after I finish this vlog so I guess I better get off here and get started on uh, catching up with the uh, orders that came in over the weekend, get that done, hopefully make a little bit of progress on this next uh, guitar that needs to be set up. So if I was four more people, we'd all be busy. I hope you've enjoyed today's update, and if you have, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please do that, because there's a lot of interesting content coming down the road. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.